Welcome to the Boat Shed. My name is John and this boat behind me and this piece that I'm holding is Antidote. I'm an engineer and a sailor with a dream of fixing up this old boat to go sailing around the world. And I've got a lot of work to do first. And in a previous video, we removed this bulkhead and last week we were improving on the design. Stick around today while we continue to fabricate parts for this forward bulkhead and discuss making this a watertight-ish bulkhead. Last time you were here, we left off by gluing a new lower floor in the anchor locker. That was held in place by the lower bulkhead section. That should hopefully come out. It should all be dry now. Let's see if that piece comes out easily. Now, I'm expecting this to be stuck a little bit to start with, but it should release because of all the tape. Also, we use the peel ply, so at the end of the day, this should break free. Just a matter of how much work it's going to take. Up nice and flush of that. So I think we can push some more laminate onto this today. We'll kind of go up to the sides and up the bow here a bit and not come off the back. When once we get everything put together, then we'll tap a few pieces over the back side. So this looks pretty good. I'm very happy with the way this raised floor has turned out. It's glued down really smoothly. Nice and tight, everything is super strong, and we have a great slope on there, a little more than 10 degrees, so it's gonna drain a lot of water, no problem. We are going to take a trip up to the bow now. We're going to start putting these pieces in. And I do have vacuum stuff set up for it. I think I'm going to appreciate having the clamping of that weird shape just so that everything lays down nice and flat, no voids. But we will still roll it out, do our best before we apply the bag. Let's just see how it goes. Well, this actually sealed up pretty well, even though you know it was laid up against this weird old chopped up fiberglass. That's a good test of this mastic tape. It lets me know that I can get a pretty good seal even when the material I'm sealing up against is not completely smooth. So going forward, I know that I can rely on that pretty well. Now let's try and get this all pulled off. Now I'm not sure if this stuff comes off easier in the cold or in hot weather. It's a little cooler in here now today. So I'm just pulling nice and slow so I don't leave a lot of the mastic behind. Now the breather got stuck in a few spots. this piece I went with solid release film instead of perforated because I didn't want to have this part get too dry. This looks great.
This original template that I used to cut out the final bulkhead has been wrapped in tape and I'll use this now as a form to make a bottom skin for what will eventually be the anchor locker grate. I can work over this pretty easily. This is a lot taller so harder to work over top of. For this grate to work I need the bottom edge of it to be above the lower floor so there's room for water to move. My original idea was to establish the bottom using this wedge of foam and some expanding foam and then I would be able to shape this and get the bottom mold of the fiberglass. But the expanding foam, especially the more you put in, it just creates these huge voids inside. You can't really shape this. I think this is just way overkill anyway, so I scrapped that idea and changed it over to just laying tape on top of the foam. So this will give me about a three quarter inch gap with a reasonable transition to the walls. Got the whole thing covered in tape and then we laid a few layers of 1708 in here to establish the shape and get the mold skin. Just remove this from the bow of the boat, and this I'm hoping is a reasonable form. I'm hoping that I roughly captured the shape. It doesn't need to be exact. And uh, this is nice and hard now, so let's get this cleaned up. The test fit at the bow shows me that we have a good enough fit. We're not in the perfect area and that is just fine. This piece will be good for laying up a bunch more glass in here now. We'll get it really thick. The gaps that I do have are mostly at the forward end of this piece and they are less than a quarter of an inch, which is the whole size I plan on drilling. Let's cut up some glass and put this piece together, make it really thick. This part is ready now to come out of the bag. We'll inspect it. We have 10 layers in here. I want to add about 10 more. It's a lot. It's going to be three quarter inch thick, but this is the piece that's going to bear all the way to the anchor chain and it's not a lot of material or a lot of resin. So I'm fine adding a bunch of extra overbuilding it. It's not going to really cost me anything. Some people ask why vacuum bag small parts like this? Is it necessary for a wet layup? No, it's not. This is overkill, but this is how I practice working with this system. This is the only way to get better at, at building vacuum bags and working efficiently with these materials is to practice with them. So it's fun for me to use these small parts as opportunities to practice with the vacuum bag. And this is the first time I think I've achieved almost a perfect vacuum. I turned off the valve last night and disconnected the pump and the bag stayed sucked down. Usually they'll start to release a bit. So let's open up and find out. Well, it looks like that's going to work quite nicely and hopefully it interfaces well with this lower bulkhead once we get this installed and tabbed into place. Now let's get started on working on the piece that will mate with this, the upper bulkhead section. Let's see how well this template did. Cut out the new piece of wood and then we'll go test fit it in the boat. Last night I put in some more foam along the top edge of the bulkhead here. That's sort of a similar treatment to what we have over here. I'm not trying to hide anything from you guys, just 
I was uh, almost late for dinner getting that ready, so I had to hurry. <laughs> Missed the filming on it. That line corresponds to the laser line that we just shot inside the boat. So that's two and one eighth inches above where this will go. And then we need to refine the size of this hole. I just cut this quickly last night just so I could roughly get it into the boat, have something to hold on to. Unfortunately, because I want to try to make this a watertight door, I need to shrink the opening by about an inch in the vertical dimension so that I have some room for the door to overlap, form a seal. We'll do another test, make sure everything will fit through it before we commit to it. This is the line we shot with the laser, so this is the actual top of the beam. So I'm going to use 3 quarter inch wood for the decking, and then I want this 1 inch overhang, and then here's a little gap between the overhang and the deck. So this line here, this little one on top, is going to be the new bottom of the opening. I'm going to be using a router template to help me make the hole in the bulkhead the right size, shape, and location. The original bulkhead had a really large opening with not a lot of material left for the structural properties of the bulkhead. On this next round, we're gonna to try to make the hole as small and round as is practically possible. For this, I'm gonna use my trusty router circle cutting jig. And this thing is amazing. It uses a quarter inch dummy bit that you put in the collet and that helps locate it exactly in the center. And then a 1 8 inch dowel pin is used as your guide hole. And then you can set this anywhere from zero to almost 19 inches in one 16th inch increments and it cuts deadly accurate circles. So we're setting this up to cut a 16 inch diameter circle and then we'll connect the two on the table saw to finish it off. This is not sponsored content, I just happen to really like this tool and I will put a link to it in the description below. It's the following morning and this has all had a chance to cure up overnight. We have these two braces here supporting all the way to the roof and that is because I'm trying to keep this piece in plane with two very small little corner cuts that I had to glue back in to the upper bulkhead. And that is because when I traced this hole, so I'd have a nice opening to let some light in for the shot of me test fitting it. Well, I misjudged the location of the hole slightly. It's frustrating, but it's okay. It's gonna be plenty strong. Let's pull these clamps off, see how it all looks, dress this up, and we can go test it back out in the boat. Once again, the packing tape is just a really great release film, and you probably have a lot of it home already. So you can see here, this is the final shape, and then of course this is where I cut it originally. So you see it's really tiny, barely noticeable. And then on the other side, it's a very small amount that we need to, to add back in. And then using that clamp has left this really nice and flush, so I'm happy that we have a good finish. Okay, so to get this shape patterned out and cut out, usually what I would do here is pin this down. You could also use like two-sided tape, like carpet tape is good for this. If you have enough of it and you're pretty confident, you can get it held down well. But we're gonna use pins just so that it's super secure. Now, this is only about five-eighths total thickness. So even my shortest pins, three-quarters, will go all the way through this. But we're actually gonna use a longer pin. We'll use inch and a quarters, and then we'll show you a little trick to break off the other side. So a trick that I learned with taking these brads out, and these are 18 gauge, so they're pretty small. Larger gauge you might not be able to do this with, but these 18s are great. And instead of cutting it off as close to the bottom as you can, these side cutters are undercut a bit. You're always gonna have a little bit that doesn't get cut off, then you gotta file it or something like that, or it's gonna scratch up your table. But what you do is if you just grab it in the jaws and sort of lightly pinch it, and then rock it back and forth, it'll actually break off below the surface of the wood. So, nice little trick that I learned bunch of years ago. Thanks, Rudy. For cutting out the flush pattern here, we're gonna use this bit here. This is a half inch shank, three quarter inch flush trim bit. It's got a bearing on the top and on the bottom and a slight curve to the flute. So it just cuts really well, carbide tipped. I love this bit. It's been with me on lots of projects. So make sure that bearing is tight on the top. They both spin free. We're gonna use 
do bottom bearing. Now we just want to remove the template. Half the time the brads will pop out and the other half the time the heads will stay in like that and you'll just pull the wood through. For this I like to use a regular pair of vice grips and we'll use the rounded head to roll them out. So that's left just very small pieces of wood that I had to graft back in. Really not a big deal and we were able to fix it pretty easily. But let's make sure we can still get stuff through this hole. Alright, well and finally, I guess, the last test is me. Looks like I fit too. Perfect. We're going to go with that. Okay, so the test fit looks pretty good. Around the edges, we fit pretty nicely. So we're ready to press on here. We're going to make the two vertical pieces now. Looking good. Let's keep going. Let's talk for a second about trying to make this bulkhead watertight. Probably a better target for us is going to be watertight-ish. If we can keep up with the water coming in with our bilge pumps, then that would be pretty good. I figure there's about 3,000 pounds of water if that compartment is full. It could be sloshing around. There's just a lot of different things to consider. To get started, I have this book here that Aladino at Sailing Magic Carpet recommended. It's Boat Strength by Dave Gare. And he basically takes your boat and then assigns you a scantling number. And from that number, there's a whack of equations that help you determine all manner of things from deck thickness to different types of planks that you would use. It really applies to fiberglass as well as wooden boat construction. And if you're building any boats or doing any modifications, it's probably a good resource to have. So using this book as a starting point for watertight bulkhead specifications, I think it might be a little overkill, but I'm trying to understand that. So I'm gonna be speaking with a few experts on this if I can. If you are watching this and you have a background in naval engineering and you know about this stuff, hit me up because I would love to chat more. So here's my rough plan. We'll start by installing a valve on the drain for the anchor locker. This way I can shut off the flow of water in the event of a breach. All the resources that I've read recommend using a thicker bulkhead than is standard, which we have already started to do, and we're going to be incorporating some layers of fiberglass as well, and they recommend adding these stiffeners. There's a couple of wooden braces on this bulkhead, but I think adding some vertical stiffeners might be in order to help increase the stiffness of this panel. You know these things never happen in calm weather. Then we're going to install a door for this panel. It'll essentially be a slightly oversized pattern of the cutout, and there will be a gasket seal around this piece and it'll probably be held with some dogs that aren't shown in the picture. I may add some stiffeners to the back of this as well if I deem that to be necessary. I like where this design is headed. I think we're on a good track but I am waiting to hear from some experts on if I need to refine this design before I charge ahead and glue these components into the boat. So we're probably going to wait for that but one thing I do know that I want to do is add a layer of fiberglass to the inside of the bulkhead pieces so that they will be impervious to water and it'll also add some strength. Last night I decided to cover this bulkhead in one layer of 1708. 
this is on the forward end so when I install this it'll all be watertight on this side now I left it a little bit long and when I applied it you can actually see here how it's been thoroughly saturated right up to the edge which is what I wanted but then the I guess capillary action probably pulled more resin out towards the end and the fiberglass is surprisingly stiff and I was expecting it to be floppier so we want to clean this edge up now Usually what I like to try to do is cut this with a knife when it's in that stage where it's still rubbery and not fully solidified because you can usually get a nice clean cut and saves you grinding and making dust later. But we're going to clean this up now with the belt sander. And I remember seeing uh, Andy from Bowerks Today show something like this where he leaves the fiberglass on even in its raw natural state and it just buzzes right off with the sander. It's not a problem. And I've um, improvised a little dust collection system here on my handheld belt sander and this will do a great job of pulling the glass down keeping it nicely attached to the part and uh, cleaning it all up the oscillating cutter will also work well but because it moves in both directions i've noticed it can at, at times kind of lift the glass just slightly at the edge you'll see a little bit of kind of cloudiness coming through on the glass so since this is just 24 hours old maybe it's still setting we'll use the belt sander to clean this up Before we install this in the boat permanently, and it's almost ready, we'll just use it to pattern out the two vertical pieces first. I want to install this pad eye up on the forward side, right around here, but on the opposite side. And this is going to be the attachment point for the end of the anchor road. So after all the chain is pushed out, then I'll have a certain amount of rope. I'll either have enough to increase the scope significantly. We're going to have some amount of rope so that if I have to, let the anchor off the boat for whatever reason. I want to be able to cut that quickly and not have to fiddle with a hard fastener. And especially since this is so far down into the boat, it's going to be kind of difficult to reach this unless someone is holding me by my ankles over the edge into the anchor locker. We're going to go with the same jig system that I've used before where I set up a thick block of plywood and drill all the holes. So that way I get a super perpendicular drill through the piece Freehanding them, of course, is possible. You won't get them perfect. Uh, not that I necessarily want to have it perfect, but I do want it to be able to seal very well because this is going to be a lower part for the watertight compartment area. And then also it's just going to make it so much easier for me to install these when they're way down in the bottom of that anchor locker if the bolts line up nicely and I don't have to fidget with them. And it is definitely not necessary. I'm going to see how long it takes me to make this one so we have a kind of an idea for how long it might take to make a jig like this and then you can decide if it's worth it for you or not. Let's get going. The clock starts now. So since I have the center lines marked, this will basically just sit right here and as long as I line them all up, then the part is going to end up roughly where I want it. So we'll hold it as best we can and drill one. Alright, time check. So there we go, they're all drilled out ready to go. I can oversize them now and plug them with epoxy so that there's no chance of water problems, but those now will line up perfectly and they will be no problem to bolt up later on because they're all perfectly installed. This is garbage now, or maybe I keep it in case I have any more of these. I don't think I do, so if anyone wants to reach out to me, I'll send this to you. 
and I'll put a link to this pad eye in the uh, description. So if anyone's got one of these and wants a template for drilling a whole jig, call me up. Email's down below in the description. Happy to help. So I don't think that took too long. I think that the time I would have spent fidgeting inside the anchor locker is probably a lot more than I just spent making that jig. So there you have it. That's my opinion. That's what we have time for today. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, you already know what to do. So go ahead and hit all those buttons. I'd like to give a really big thanks to the folks on Patreon who are coming from all around the world to help support this production and keep it moving. And I appreciate all you guys. Thank you so much. If you'd like to join the Patreon group, there is a link in the description below and you can get access to some behind the scenes content, some other occasional updates. Extra big thanks to the folks whose name are appearing on this screen who really go the extra mile. If you're new to the channel and you'd like to subscribe for more of this content, there's a button over here. And if you wanna get caught up from the very beginning of the refit, then this playlist is for you. See y'all in the next one. I always forget what side to point to.